We live in what I call the age of uncertainty, especially now that we're living in a globalized, fully connected world with work and travel and geopolitical forces, etc. We can predict to a certain level of confidence what's going to happen in the future, but we can't predict with total accuracy. We never could. The pandemic taught us that. And there'll be other events in the future, whether it's universal and brutal as a pandemic or it's industry specific or it's geopolitical or, or whatever. So these all have an influence on strategy. When we think of risk, we need to think about it at three levels. There's the known, known risks that are everyday occurrences such as fraud, such as process failures that you know about and you can put in place mitigations. Then there's the known unknown. And that's where we think about strategy, is if you have a focus on a select few customers, what is the risk to the strategy if one of those customers goes out of business? And you can monitor that and plan it. Then there's the unknown unknowns. And that's the things like the, the financial crisis, pandemics, events that you can't see coming. We need to put in place plans for resilience in order to survive such events. So when I say strategy and risk are two sides of the same coin, what I mean is that when you think about strategy, you've got to these days also think about what are the risks to those objectives and put in place mitigations to prevent them or plans to circumnavigate them if they do occur. You can have strategic initiatives that are about risk mitigation. That would be around putting in place the capabilities to protect the organization against a risk happening. Because we saw in the pandemic, which companies just weren't prepared for what happened. So you can have initiatives to say, okay, we can see that we are reliant on a small number of customers in a certain region, perhaps. What do we do if there's a geopolitical problem that makes it difficult for us to continue to do business? So you decide to have an initiative around what we do in such circumstances, or we, we kind of diversify our client base in order to lower the impact on the organization if, if that should happen. Or it, it could be just actions that are essentially plans in place if they should materialize. And, you know, some of the known known risks around financial fraud or around process improvement, I mean, they can be dealt with by putting in place the right protections to make sure they don't um, happen in the first place. It covers all three. I mean, what we need to do is to look at each strategic objective. What is our performance expectation? And then you put in place the key performance indicators, the KPIs, and the targets over the lifetime of the strategy. For each objective, you also, we also need to look at the key risk events. You know, what could happen and what is the consequence to the organization if that happens? then you support the KPIs on the objective by key risk indicators that helps you to monitor the likelihood of that risk materializing and the tolerance level that you're willing to accept. And that varies according to your risk appetite. So whereas KPIs are performance targets, key risk indicators, are the tolerance level against that risk. And, and they can be classified as strategic initiatives if you need to build the capabilities to deal with that risk in order to limit the potential damage to the organization. What would happen? If we had another pandemic or something similar a couple of years from now, and that's not these days, that is not that unlikely. Okay, how will the organization survive that? What will it do if another COVID 19 or similar should arise? 
And then resilience is activating those plans when that becomes likely and happens. We saw during the pandemic a lot of very well-established businesses going out of business or suffering horrendous financial losses because they weren't prepared. That became clear after the financial crisis, is that you know, we just didn't realize that a small problem in the US that we thought it was with a subprime mortgage market would become such a global catastrophe. We, we need to take into consideration when we're building strategies the risks against the objectives, but also alongside that, have plans in place to deal with those such events if they should arise. What could happen and what would be the consequence to the organization? And the ones that are serious are the, are the ones that you would want to monitor through strategic key risk indicators. Others, you'll moni monitor more at the operational level and as business as usual. But the big key risk event you want to kind of monitor on an ongoing basis and report through the quarterly strategic review meeting. I mean, it is contextual, depends on the organization, but generally I would recommend two, th two things. One, the functions need to understand each other better. Too often, risk people see strategy people as being too optimistic and doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Strategy people see risk people as being people who try to stop things happening. Both departments need to understand that's not the case, that they're both working towards the same objectives. I would not, in most cases, again, it's contextual, I would not integrate the functions. The reason for that, the power would then lie with the person and people in control of that department who might be more risk focused or more strategy focused. Typically, there'll be two separate functions, both reporting against the same strategy and the same ob objectives. But it is critical, from my experience, that the risk people and strategy people need to better understand what it is they do. I spoke to quite a lot of practitioners who say it's very difficult to find people who really understand both. They're either risk experts or they're strategy experts. And getting people who see both sides of the coin, if you will, is actually not as easy as it should be.